morning everybody it's Kylie Patchett here and welcome to today's webinar this is an awesome topic this one so thank you so much for um, carving time out of your morning to come and listen to how to ditch the inner bee um, let's just say that perhaps I might swear occasionally but the only word that you'll hear me say is the inner bitch um, and I use it very very deliberately because that is how we talk with ourselves quite a lot. So today we are going to learn how to ditch your inner bitch, let go of your internal control freak or perfectionist tendencies, clear out your head once and for all. And I'll also be sharing with you my very, very simple way of magnetically attracting to you what you really want in life. And this is all through mind over matter. So before we get started, I want to check in with you and make sure that you are in the right webinar room. So this webinar is perfect for you if your inner talk or inner critic rules your life. If often you don't do what you really want to do in life because you are full of fear and full of stories about what might happen if you take that risk. If you feel like your life doesn't fit you and you don't really know what to do about it or what's gone wrong. And also if you decide to make a change but you end up making the same mistakes all the time. So you find yourself trying something and then you're falling back into the same patterns. So the missing piece with all of these is being able to have the ability to not control your mind but to send it in the direction that you would like rather than allowing it to go crazy burko. And this is one of my absolutely favorite mind sayings because it is quiet the mind and the soul will speak because the mind is almost the exact opposite of your soul. Your soul is that quiet knowing voice that knows everything will be okay, that knows that you're okay to do what you really want to do, that knows your desires. That's inside all of us. But if you have a mind that is going crazy crackers on you and telling you all these things that aren't possible, quite often we can't even hear what our soul wants. And that's one of my biggest, biggest passions in life is to help other women to uncover what their soul's whispering to them because we are all deserving of what I call a delicious life. And that's really about making sure that you're listening to those impulses that come from your soul, not from the inner critic in your head. So let's take a little minute to think about what it would look like if you had control over your mind or if you were able to send the inner bitch away when she started talking to you. So you know what I'm talking about. All those voices that say, you know, you can't do that, you're not good enough, you're too, you know, you don't have enough money or you don't look enough in a certain way or you don't have the right partner or you don't have the right pieces of paper or whatever, whatever it is that those are the negative messages for you, just close your eyes for a second and let us imagine what life would be like if you were able to just say to that voice inside you, thank you for sharing, but I'm listening to my soul. What would that mean for you? Oh, sorry, I'm going back into the questions and a couple of you have said that I'm quite crackly. Is my reception better now, ladies? Oh, goodness me. I'm wondering whether this might be one of those mornings where internet gets the better of us. Yeah. Let us continue and if the crackling becomes too much of an issue, I will continue and record this and send it to your beautiful selves as a recording. I hope it's going to be okay. All right, so have you got firm in your mind what it would be like for you to not have to worry about what the inner bitch was saying? Now, right at the end of this webinar, and we all know that, you know, we sign up for webinars and quite often they, they become just a little message in your inbox. <laughs> and so I wanted to give you a thank you for staying all the way to the end. And that is to have access to 
what I call the tall poppy profile, which is a really, really simple but very effective and very telling self-assessment tool. I developed it when I travelled my own journey from self-destruct to radical self-respect. And, and it's a very easy way to check in on your own life and to make sure that you're, you know, you're doing what you need to create the space for all of your needs, which is the only time that we're able to listen to that inner soul. And I'm just noticing there's a lot of people that are falling in and out of the room. So I'm wondering if we do have internet connection. My apologies if, if you are having trouble either getting in or staying in. Okay, so before we get started so that you know that you're in safe hands, I wanted to share a little bit about where I've come from and who I am and why I do the work that I do. This is a picture of me on the 30th of January 2012. The reason I know the date so well is that it's my 37th birthday and it was also the day that I launched this health coaching practice. Now, when I go back to those days, I was full of inner bitchiness towards myself. I was standing up in front of people as a health coach, still quite significantly overweight. But more than that, on the inside, I was so terrified of doing what I really, really deeply wanted to do. I was so terrified to step out into my delicious life, to be able to stand up and say, I want to do this. I want to offer myself to these other women that are trying to do the same thing that I'm in the middle of doing. And I wanted to really reiterate to you that a lot of the time we catch ourselves and we catch ourselves from doing what we really want to do because we think in our heads that we have to be perfect before we can try something. What I would love to say to you is that as long as you're listening to your soul and you're not actually allowing that inner bitch to go rampant in your head, then it's going to be okay. It's all a journey. It's all everything. And that, you know, this picture is after me having been a medical scientist and um, a forensic scientist for 20 years and then having to leave my profession and take care of my dad and I had my two little girls in this time and this was me finally coming out of a very dark very 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 depressed very heavy very lacking in self-respect period in my life but what I will say to you is when you learn these principles of how to take control of your mind and you learn how to actually be really, really present with your own answers, life takes on some magical, magical, magical turns. So where's the end point for me? Where's the end point for you? For me, this was taken last week in my backyard. For me, trusting myself and disconnecting from the old stories and the old beliefs I've had about myself have been absolutely pivotal in creating an amazing life and an amazing life I don't mean a perfect life please don't take me that way because I don't have a perfect life I still have challenges like everybody but this work and the stuff that I'm just about to share with you really really gives you the opportunity to be able to see a different way of being and step into it for yourself you know, I'm still on my own journey. I still do mindset coaching every single week with my own coach. I still, you know, am learning to take care of myself even better. But a big, big piece of my transformation from the first picture to this picture is that I have learnt totally and absolutely and utterly how to trust myself. So let us begin. These are my top three tips for making sure that your mind is over matter. So it is not going to carry on with nonsense for you. Okay, so I'm going to count these tips down because there's really, really important flip sides of each of these tips. The first one is you really need to understand that what you think is only one version of reality. It's quite literally only one version of reality. Now, depending on whether you've already done mindset work or self-development work, you may already be aware of this, but for a lot of clients that I work with, they're not. And what that means is that when you are trapped in your version of reality and you don't realize that there's other versions, you're really, really limiting your ability to create what you want. Because by definition, you can only, if you think like this, create what you already know. 
So what do I actually mean by that? There's an amazing part of your brain that's called the reticular activation system or the RAS for short. And its job is to filter the millions and millions and millions and millions of pieces of information, sensory information from your five senses that hit your brain every second. And its job really, there's many, many steps, but to be very, very simplified about it, that its job is to actually filter these pieces of information for the five to seven chunks of information that your brain can actually process, actually be consciously aware of and process in each second of the day. So how does the reticular activation system decide what it keeps out of the millions of pieces of information and what it throws out? And this is where it becomes really, really interesting. And this is the one pivotal thing that if you don't learn anything else from this hour, this is the one pivotal thing that could change your life. And it's because when you understand that your brain is filtering for things that match your story of the world. Your brain is filtering for things that match your story of the world. So you can have millions of pieces of information in there, but if you feel like you're not good enough, or life is hard, or I never have any money, or I'm always going to be overweight. That is exactly what your mind is filtering for. So you will forget, delete, distort, and generalize all the other pieces of information that are hitting your brain, and your brain will only match up and recognize the things that match your belief systems. Now, why is this so important? It quite literally means that the way that the brain wires together and can be unwired is that you can change your reality by the beliefs that you have and by the ability for yourself to tell yourself a different story of reality. So what's another way of doing this? If, if you haven't realized that this is what's going on, and you want to actually change the way that you're looking at the universe, what's the difference? So one of the things that I always work with with clients is their ability to dive deep. And this comes in two forms, to understand your filters, to understand your filters, what you're filtering for in this process. And then the secondary thing is, sorry, I'm just reading comments. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. The audio quality is really bad. Okay, I am, okay, I'm not even sure if you can hear me, so I'm going to type back. I'm having internet difficulties this morning for some reason. We will send a full recording. Okay. Because we're recording, I will continue, but there is some feedback on the line that the audio quality is very poor. So I'm not sure what's going on with my internet. Bless Telstra, I will ring them again. Um, but yes, please know that there is a recorded version and it will be sent in straightly, straight to your inboxes within, um, yeah, by this afternoon. Okay, so understanding your filters, but also understanding other people's filters. So often this mismatch in our realities, in what we believe to be true, is the biggest source of tension in relationships. And I notice it a lot in my house. Um, between my husband and I, not so much anymore because we have learnt to understand each other's realities much more than what we used to. But certainly between my children, I have two girls aged eight and nine, and they have very, very different ways of looking at the world. And even this morning we were laying in bed um, and they'd had a play date and one said that the other was being mean and that, you know, the other one said the other one was being mean. And I am absolutely sure and certain for both of them, they were telling the truth. In their version of reality, both of them really, really, truly believed that their sister was being mean to them at this play date. Now, what happens with this is that when we get stuck in our version of reality and we make our own opinion the only opinion that we will listen to, we can create real sources of conflict and real sources of misunderstanding. So when I say understand your filters, one of the really, really simple ways of doing this and diving deep into this 
is to ask yourself what you think about yourself and what you believe about yourself. Now, this sounds like a simple exercise, but you will find some absolute gold when you allow yourself to sit with a journal or sit with a friend if you've got a really beautiful friend that you're happy to share some quite in-depth um, belief work with and sit with them and actually dive into what do I believe about myself? Now, in the first picture of me, I had some still quite strong beliefs about myself like I am fat, no one's going to listen to me as a health coach if I'm overweight, I don't know enough to start my own business, I'm not smart enough, I'm not savvy enough to start my own business, money will always be an issue for me. Can you see that when you dive deep into your own belief systems about yourself that you can see why your reality is how it is. And I say reality in the broadest sense of the word, reality in inverted commas, because it's all just a story. The beautiful thing is when you understand what you actually are consciously or sorry, unconsciously believing and consciously pulling out of your head so that you know, then you have a choice. And my beautiful friend Susan Pierce from the Mind Gardeners, who are one of the top mindset trainers in the corporate space in Australia, gave me at a workshop the other day a super, super simple tool. And I really want to share this with you because it's so, it's so simple. It feels like it's not enough, but it is. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks and it's amazing. When you feel yourself going into a version of reality that doesn't feel happy and doesn't feel lighthearted or doesn't feel how you want it to feel, Back it up by doing these two things. Number one, you have to obviously be aware. So I want you to be really, really, really super aware of what is going on in your inner bitch or your headspace for the next week. If you hear yourself saying something like, oh, yeah, that's how life really is. Oh, I'm never going to have any money. It's always so hard. Any of those negative things, do this. Create a pause space. So press pause. And the way that Susan and her partner Martina say to do this is to use one of your five senses. So if, for instance, I'm in my office and I need to ring somebody about setting up a really exciting meeting and I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it, I'm feeling like, oh, oh, this is a bit outside my comfort zone, I will then go, okay, time to pause. So pause by opening up whatever one of your five senses you would like. Now, why do we use the five senses? Because your five senses can only exist in the present moment. They can't be in the past, going over and over and over something, and they also can't be in the future, having worry about how things might have. So when you hit pause, you quite literally can consciously open up one of your five senses. For me, I actually really like to open up my hearing. So when you actually open up your hearing, I imagine my ears unfurling like big elephant ears and just breathing a couple of times and being really aware of all the sounds around you. So if I do it now, when I was talking to you a couple of moments ago, I was very only conscious really of the sound of my own voice. But now when I open up my hearing, I can hear my daughter's budgies. I can hear there's wind in the tree leaves outside my office window. I can hear very faintly that there's noise from a road a couple of kilometres away. That's the highway. And I can hear there's a couple of flies somewhere or something that's buzzing just outside my window. Now, what that's done for me is brought me completely back into the present moment, which by definition disconnects you from the big old story that you've just been talking to yourself. When you hit the pause button, the next step is to just turn your attention to something that is helpful. Now, one of the easiest ways of doing this is something like affirmations or something like um, a power statement. So if, for instance, if in my example, I was wondering about whether I, you know, oh, had the had the guts to ring someone that I really wanted to connect with business-wise, my affirmation might be um, being 100% congruent is the pathway to a healthy business or whatever. Because if I've got a desire to connect with someone and think that we could create magic together, then being congruent is actually connecting with that person and leaping into it. So that's a really, really very simple 
but very, very um, powerful way of rewiring and reframing your belief systems. Now, after you do that consciously for a little while, you'll start to realize that the negative chatter and the big stories have stopped firing so much because your brain is this amazing plastic beast of a thing. And what that means is that when you think a lot on a certain wavelength or certain brain, sorry, not a wavelength, a particular pathway in your brain, that pathway wires up stronger and stronger and stronger. Quite literally, the more you fire it, the more that it wires up. But when you stop firing it and you start firing something else that's a helpful belief, your brain is what we call neuroplastic or has neuroplasticity, which is one of my favorite words. And it can actually change itself, which is just amazing. Isn't that amazing that our bodies are wired so that we can strengthen something and disconnect something. So you have absolute power over your brain. Now let's take this one step further. When we say understanding others' filters, it's time to get really curious about what is going on in someone else's mind. Instead of, you know, your husband saying, oh, did you really need to buy that pair of shoes? And you going, oh my God, don't you trust me? I can spend money whenever I want or whatever. Instead of going into an immediate reaction, how about saying, what concerns you about me buying shoes? What does that, how does that make you feel? You don't have to be a counsellor for everyone. I don't mean it like that. But, you know, with the people that are important to you, it's important to create a trust and respect relationship where you really understand what goes on for them. And so ask questions, get curious. One of my mindset coaches always tells me, get curious about what's in their bucket. And their bucket is their set of experiences and their set of beliefs. So get your goggles on, get your snorkel on and dive into their bucket and have a little look around. Oh, okay. He's worried about our ability to pay our mortgage. So when I spend money on shoes, he makes it mean, you know, that I'm being disrespectful or I'm doing something that really, really threatens him or whatever. Having some clear communication about other people's filters and also setting them straight um, on some things that are to do with you. And I see this again with my daughters, you know, one of them says the other one's being mean. The other one says they're being mean. And when we talk about it, we realize that it's the same behavior, but in two different ways. And really both of them, what's really going on is that they're at a new school. And when they're asked to go on a play date, they're really excited. and They really want to make sure that that friend is really bonded to them. It's a normal human thing to want to belong. But when we see other people doing something and then we make it mean, oh, she's being horrible to me because she really wants to be good friends with someone else then it gets really confusing for us. So that's a little practical tool to stop yourself. So remember, story, 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 pause, open up one of your five senses to bring you into the present moment and then consciously ask yourself what you really want to be believing and thinking and then give your brain a direct command. You are in charge of this beautiful mind. Number two. Let's understand what is really going on for you when you have a fear. A fear is something that, you know, in the primal part of our brain would really, really. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. There's more, more information here saying, yeah, I can't, I can't understand what you're saying. So we're going to have to put this down to dodgy, dodgy internet and I will get the, um, the replay to you immediately as soon as I get off and convert it. I'm very, very sorry about that. Um, okay, so your mind is trained to keep you safe. So when you actually have a fear about something and it sprouts up in your head and it's like, oh my God, I can't do that. Oh, it's gonna be awful. Da, 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 da. Understand that the part of your brain that is in charge of fear response is the primal part of your brain that is wired to give you, and I'm sure you've heard this before, the fight or flight reflex. So you get a surge of adrenaline, you get a lot of um, almost, we would probably call it anxiety, but it's almost like a, okay, I'm ready to run, I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to run, I'm ready to fight. It's that heightened sensation. Now, this does two things. It lights up the part of your brain that is responsible for keeping you safe. So fear is just your mind trying to keep you safe. It was developed in the time when we were living with no protection and no houses, 
around wild animals or other people that might come and eat us. I don't know, whatever, if you're living with cannibals. And it's about having a fear response that allows you to run away from the saber-toothed tiger or stand and fight when someone else attacks your family. Now, in our day and age, there really isn't, well, sorry, I'm talking about from an Australian point of view or a first world point of view, really the things that send fear into us are not necessarily life-threatening. So they're not necessarily life-threatening, but they create the same response in your brain, a huge cascade of, of um, energy, a huge cascade of emotions, a huge cascade of hormones, and you are ready to fight or fly, run away. Now, what happens in our brains is that this condition response happens when we actually think that we are under threat. It can be something as simple. I'm just thinking about what's my fearful things. Um, okay, I have a huge baby of snakes. That comes from a brown snake actually chasing me. Um, but let's think about other non-threatening things. Okay, so fear response. I have a fear response every time I get up on stage. Even though I speak a lot professionally, I still have a fear response every time I get back on stage. Now, me, I've been able to reframe this as more excitement because fear and excitement are the same thing, except that excitement is with breath and fear is without. <laughs> fear is usually you holding your breath and excitement is like, <laughs> there's a lot of breathing that goes with it. But same cascade of emotions, same cascade of hormones. So other things that can be very fearful is fear of missing out, fear of standing out, um, fear of not belonging in a group. Fear of not being loved, fear of being cut off from people that we love. So all these fears, unfortunately for us, still trigger that massive primal response. So when your mind is locked in a, oh my God, I cannot do that. That is so incredibly scary. I'm going to pass out if I try to do it. It's just your mind trying to keep you safe. The job of your ego and your mind is to keep you from doing things that feel threatening because fear lights up this threatening, you know, uh, cascade in our minds. It basically means that fear is just an, it's like an automatic response, which also means that a lot of what we're fearful of is not really threatening. It's just a conditioned response our brain has. So when you have a fear response, you've got to be aware of the fact that it's just your mind trying to keep you safe. And the thing is that safe for your mind actually means that you are staying where you always have been. Because in our primal brain, there's a huge fear response from the unknown. Because the unknown can be where the saber-toothed tiger comes from. It can, can be where the massive cyclone comes from. It can be where um, the threat to my family or my village comes from. But in this day and age, the fear response does not have to be such a strong life-threatening thing. So the takeaway with this one is just to understand that fear is just your ego, just your mind trying to keep you safe. Now, let's talk about comfort zones because a lot of the time someone will say, oh, I can't do that. That's way outside my comfort zone. In fact, I just said it at the beginning of this webinar and I thought, Kylie, you know better than that. My opinion of comfort zones is that they are elegant adult excuses for not doing anything that creates a fear response. Now, that's perfectly fine if you want to stay in a life that is exactly the same as what you have now because that's the known, right? That's where your mind feels safe. So even if your known is something that's highly uncomfortable, like being in an abusive space, um, you know, being at a workplace that's horrible, if you feel that that is your comfort zone because you have experienced it earlier in your life or you've done it before and it's comfortable, and I don't mean comfortable as in it feels good, I mean comfortable as in I know it, I know how this works, I know when I go to work that I'm going to hate it, and that's just the way it is. That is one of the hugest ways to stay in a life that feels not particularly mm. fulfilling or what I would say is delicious. And so that is a major, major thing to remember is that, you know, your mind's just trying to keep you safe. If you want a life that's different to what you have now, you need to do things that are creating that fear response. 
But there is something that you can do about it when your mind actually has the fear response. Now, this technique is actually even simpler than the one that I just shared with you about the pause. This technique is actually about just one simple word. Now, similar to what I said about the story and then use the pause and then redirect your attention and your thought process, this one is even more powerful and it's based on one word. It's called thank you. It is impossible for your brain to light up any of the fear response um, parts of your brain whilst you actually <laughs> whilst you actually have this big, 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 big story. You cannot think about anything that you're grateful for or even the word thank you. Now, when I first started working with a mindset coach um, a couple of years ago, I actually had pink poppy um, sticky notes all over my house with the word thank you on it because I was so attached to my ways of feeling that the world had to be and the, the things that I was fearful of. It was really, really, really powerful for me to learn that the word thank you disconnects everything. So I want you to try it with me now. Take the next 30 seconds to think about something that gives you a huge fear response or makes you feel very, 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 very uncomfortable. Now, I'm going to do this with snakes because snakes are something I'm very fearful of. doesn't matter whether it's a rational or irrational fear. It doesn't really matter at all because your mind doesn't need to actually know the difference between irrational and rational. Okay, so think about something that you are really, really fearful of. Allow yourself to picture you being in a situation where you have to do that thing. Paint a picture for yourself. Imagine how you're feeling, what you're dressed in, where you would be, what you're hearing, what you're seeing. Maybe there's a taste in your mouth. I'm going to give you a few moments to make that picture and that experience super, 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 super real in your mind. Okay. Feels pretty icky, whatever it is, doesn't it? You might even notice a change in your breathing or a change in the way that you're feeling emotionally. And now I want you to think about one word. I want you to think or say out loud the word thank you. Sometimes when I have a really big fear going on, it takes about four or five thank yous. But what you'll notice when you're saying or thinking the word thank you is that the part of your brain that lights up when you fear something cannot be activated at the same time. It's actually physically or physiologically impossible. So turn the fear talk off with the word thank you. Sometimes I say thank you for sharing brain but I'm doing it anyway. Thank you for keeping me safe brain but I'm doing it anyway or just Thank you, 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 until the fear dissolves. Now, why do we do that? Because, again, the more you light up a part of your brain that says I'm fearful about something, the more you filter for it, the more that you create it, the more that you fear it. It is a yucky, vicious vortex of self-fulfilling prophecy and we don't need it in our lives. So use the thank you principle. All this mindset work is really about really, really, really simple tools. Now. If you find that you have got deep-seated fears about anything in life, sometimes the thank you principle will disconnect them, but it hasn't cleared the belief. And that's when I would suggest perhaps looking at more personal work or doing a program that helps around mindset coaching techniques that's a longer-term program. And I'll be sharing about options with that later on. Okay, so our last of the three tips is to understand that you are not a victim of your thoughts. You have the ultimate power. Now, this was the underpinning thing that I wanted all of my clients to understand when I very first started. Why is it so important to me for women to understand their innate power? 
innate, natural, God-given, goddess-given, universe-given, whatever your belief system is, you are immeasurably powerful. But we are told a particular version of reality from quite a young age in our society that says that if you think a particular way, that's the way that it is and you're just a victim and actually, you know what? We aren't all sold that story. I wasn't sold that story. I was never ever taught that I was a victim, but a lot of people are. And what I want to tell you is that my worst, worst, worst point in my life, my deepest, darkest moments was when I felt completely powerless to change my existence. It was just after my dad had died. Um, we'd lost him after five years. I was an only child. Um, he lived with us for five years. I had looked after him. I didn't have an identity of my own work-wise. I'd put on 25 kilos when he was dying. I was smoking, which is really smart for a respiratory scientist. I'd taken up drinking every night. And I, well, and I was depressed, absolutely depressed. I felt completely without power. I felt completely without power. And I think that that is the worst thing that anyone can feel. Because if you feel that you have no power, you have no ability to change your reality and therefore you are a victim. How did I change that for myself? I had an epiphany. I can only call it an epiphany. I always love that word. Epiphany. It sounds like a, an epiphany. What happened was that I was outside one night and I, you know, was sitting with a drink in one hand and a cigarette in the other and I was really, really pissed off with the universe, frankly. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm over this. I am so over being this fat and this depressed and this, you know, I, I had all these big stories about you know, why my life was so horrible and da, 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 da. And then I was thinking about my dad and I was thinking about watching him die, take his last breath. And I was angry that that had had to happen. I got angry with him because he'd had me so late because he was 91 when he died. I, I was born when he was 55. I made him, you know, I was blaming him. Why would you have a daughter that young? I shouldn't, I, oh, sorry, I shouldn't be, having to deal with this when I'm so young, da, da, da. What a big story, whatever. And I had a realisation that I was really, really, really bereft at losing my dad, but there was one step worse than that for me, which was he died at the age of 91, having never, ever, ever, ever expressed the amazing gifts inside of him. He had never expressed what he really wanted to do. He had never expressed what he was really, really good at, because his version of reality was, he was born in the 1920s, he was born in the depression. So his version of reality was there's never enough money, that work is a duty, that life is about doing the right thing and that I am only okay in the world if I work really, really hard. That was my dad's filters. And so he died at 91 with his light, with his story, with his gift to the world trapped inside of him. And I thought, holy crap, Kylie, epiphany time, you're doing the same thing to yourself. You've got this big story about how life is horrible and it has to be about money and responsibility and doing the right thing and duty and blah, blah, blah. And I realized in that moment that I have conscious ability to create what I want in my life. And I was going to hell or high water change my ability to create my life before I was 91 and in a box. So I gave myself permission to recreate my life. I gave up everything that I did not like. I didn't, I gave up smoking, I gave up drinking, I gave up self-sabotaging myself. And it wasn't an overnight thing, but it was definitely a line in the sand where I said, that's enough, that's enough. We're not doing this anymore. And one of the things that I realized was that there was something very, very deep inside of me that was calling me to travel my own journey from hating myself to loving myself and then help other women do the same thing. And it's been inside of me for my entire life. But because I was in victim mentality and, oh, my God, the world done me wrong, I didn't understand I had the power inside of me. Because the thing with your desires is you don't get given your desires in life without actually having the ability to create them. And that's what I mean by ultimate power. So let's talk about how to use the ultimate power for good. 
because you are powerful. You can create an absolutely shitty existence for yourself. And congratulations if you've done that because it's all about what I believe I am able to create and what I believe I am able to accept. So I wrote a blog just, uh, just a little while ago about manifesting mojo. Now I use funky language for it, but this is really about harnessing your internal power your internal goddess given universe given god given whatever you want to call it power so stop creating what you don't want stop sitting in victim mode and start creating what you really do so what are the four steps of manifesting <laughs> and there's a secret fourth step usually there's only three set it up for yourself what do i mean by that set it up for yourself means if you understand what's not working in your life travel on the opposite end of the continuum and think about what you really do want your life to be like. Now, depending on the way that you embed information or learn, this may be a picture board, like a vision board, or it may be just some feelings. Um, one of the things that I would recommend for everybody is to work out what their core desired feelings are by a lady called Danielle Laporte. And her way of doing this is called the desire map. Now it's just about to be re-released in December of 2014. So don't go out right now at the end of November and, <laughs> and buy it. I would, I would advise you to wait until after the December the 4th. And so you can actually create a filter for yourself of feelings. What are the feelings that I want more of in my life? Sometimes for some people creating a goal list without actually attaching it to feelings is quite difficult. And it depends again what you would like. So my example was we decided that we were going to move um, from Maroochydore up to Mullaney, which is in the Sunshine Coast hinterland. It's mountainous. It's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. We are so lucky to live here. Now, when we decided that we were going to move because we wanted to move schools, we actually sat down all together at our kitchen table. And as a family, the four of us, my two girls and my beautiful husband and I, created a list of non-negotiables. Now the kids turn it into pictures because obviously at their ages, they're not that interested in writing a big long list necessarily in words, but pictures are great for them. So that can be as simple as that. So for us, we said what we wanted in the house and we got really, really specific. So you can do this in one specific area as well. It doesn't have to be your whole life. Now the second thing is, it is not enough to create a vision board or think about this for one minute of one day and then go, mm, look at that. See, I don't have any power. The universe doesn't give me anything. No, love. You've got to exercise it. You've got to set down the wiring in your brain so that your brain is filtering for this particular opportunity. So step two is step into it. And what I mean by step into it is to create active visualization space in your day, every day. So from the time that we made that list for our house, I actually sat for at least five to 10 minutes of every single day and actively visualized stepping into the front area of my house, feeling connected, feeling looked after, feeling cradled, feeling love, feeling like this was a happy place to be. I actually visualized myself looking over mountains because we really wanted a view. I visualized my kids jumping on a trampoline because that was one of the things that they really wanted to do. And I added layers and layers and layers to the visualization. How does it feel? How does it smell? How does it sound? How does it touch? How does it taste? Use your five senses to create a really, really colorful, active visualization and do it every single day. This is like sending out a very clear order form to the universe, but you're doing it through the power of your own mind. Your own mind does not know the difference between reality and imagined reality. When you're imagining a reality, you're creating neural networks in your mind and a belief system filter that is filtering for that exact opportunity, that exact thing, that exact everything. Now, Number three, again, is something that a lot of people complain about as part of manifestation. And I call it the skin in the game step. Put some damn skin in the game. It is not enough to actively visualize as much as it would lovely be if it could be. But 
I also got online to realestate.com. I started looking, I started opening the paper, I started asking people where I went. Do you know of a house in the hills that we can rent? Do you know whether there's a house with a separate entrance that has a beautiful office? Do you know if there is two acres on top of a hill looking over the Glasshouse Mountains? And you have to put skin in the game. You've got to back the universe up and your mind up by actually doing active stuff as well. And then the secret squirrel last step of my manifesting mojo and stepping into your real power is stop settling. I repeat, stop settling. If it is important enough, if it is part of your desire for yourself and for your life, stop settling. What do I mean by that? We went to thousands of houses, it felt like. It was probably only 20, but we went to heaps of houses. And some of them were okay. Some of them had some of the things we wanted. Some of them didn't. And we finally, as a family, had the presence of mind to stop settling. No, this is not it. Keep looking. No, this is not it. Keep looking. No, this is what it, not it. Keep looking. What would have happened if we'd settled? We would never, ever have found the house that matched our intentions list, that matched my active visualisation. And what that's basically saying to the universe is, I'll order filet mignon with a side of beautiful vegetables and a delicious homemade sauce and it's all organic and, oh, it's beautiful. But if uh, steak and chips from Sizzler comes past, I'll say yes to that. The universe is up there cooking your beautiful filet mignon and they're taking time and they're creating it and it's going to be beautiful and, oh, my God, the taste is going to be amazing and they're just about to deliver it to you and you say yes to the Sizzler steak with fries. It is time to get really, really crystal clear aware of where you are settling in your life and stop it. Okay, stop it. This is one of my biggest bugbears with my clients and anyone I interface with. You cannot create the life that you want by settling for something. Know that you're in a power and your in a natural right in this world is to create what you want. And there is more than enough for every one of us. So stop playing victim and start doing something that is about creating with the power that you have. So let's talk about life transformation. This is all part of life transformation. For me, basically, life transformation has two simple steps. Step one, take radical responsibility. If your mind is doing a number on you, if your universe is not how you want it to be, if your life feels like crap, take responsibility for it. You created it. You thought it. Yes, it might be from beliefs that were laid down well and truly in your childhood, but it is time to take radical responsibility for it. Do not complain about your life without being willing to do something about it. And step two is once you've got the awareness, once you've taken radical responsibility for it, then you just got to practice radical self-respect. And radical self-respect is all about self-love. It's all about learning to tame the inner bitch so that you can live side by side without killing each other. And it's also about stepping into your power. Your power is such an important thing. So let's do a little quick recap. And what are we doing for time? Okay, perfect time. Excellent. Okay, so let's decide what does work. Deep diving for your filters. Deep diving for your beliefs about yourself. If you're having relationship issues, deep dive about what relationships mean to you and just keep on journaling and pour it all out on a page because I can guarantee if it's not working for you, there's a belief underneath the surface that is not helpful for creating that in your life. Always, 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 always. Because if you didn't have the belief, you would have already created it. Number two, use the thank you principle. When your head is going down the fear track, stop lighting the fear part of your brain up by saying thank you. Oh, and also with your deep diving of your filters, sorry, just take one step back, um, use the pause principle. So I'm um, in a big story, I'm in a big belief, da, 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 pause, open up your five senses. If you're a touch person, touch your desk, anchor yourself. Oh, here I am in the present moment. Now I can make a conscious choice about what I'm actually going to think about. And also then, last thing is exercise your manifestation mojo. Step into your power. Your right in this world is to create 
what you actually want and it is available to all of us all of the stories that i ever told myself about i can't have i can't have i can't have i'm too fat i'm too poor i'm too stupid i'm too whatever whatever the stories were it's all just rubbish it's just a version of reality and i tell you the power of changing your reality in your head is that your actual physical reality changes and yes it is that simple so let's go back to remembering why you're here when we first showed this slide before you created a vision for yourself of what life would be like if you were free of the inner bitch, free of the self-talk that wasn't helpful in your mind. I want you to take yourself back to that place. And I want you to ask yourself this question. What can I do right now, right now? To honor yourself what's one thing that you can do right now to help you create that picture that's in your head what's one principle that really spoke to you within this webinar that you can put into place is it the pause and deep dive for beliefs is it the thank you principle or is it just exercising your manifestation mojo one thing and I want you to keep that in your mind so I shared with you before my story part of my story was having conscious understanding of what I'd created and conscious understanding of why it had happened that I'd created that pile of <laughs> in my life and then the secondary thing was to realize that if I'd created it myself that maybe I needed a hand unraveling it and that's why I do what I do now, because I love to help other women unravel this. So what I did for myself was I got myself a mindset coach and I created what I wanted. Now, that wasn't the only thing that I did. Obviously, I've made massive, courageous, big, ballsy changes in my life, but I also got outside help. Now, if you feel like you need outside help, one thing that I would say is that a lot of therapies or a lot of um, things out there really, really want you to go into energizing what I call the problem. So I want you to talk about what the big story is about how your life sucks and how you have no money and whatever. Quite often they'll help you to go back in time and find out where the root cause of all of that is. But then there's a lot of, and how did that make you feel? And how did that make you feel? And how did that make you feel? Now, most of us do not necessarily want to go back into uncomfortable or unhappy events. And that's why I coach very, very differently. There's two pieces, well, in fact, three pieces since I've made this slide of my coaching. Um, and that's basically holistic health. So taking care of your mind, your body and your soul and also mindset mastery. So a lot of tools and techniques that I can use in a coaching uh, program, but also to teach you so that you can apply yourself so that you've got tools in your lunchbox that you actually can put into practice so that you can create what you want. And that is a huge, huge thing for my clients. The third thing I now do is business mindset coaching. So I often work with heartpreneurs that want to create businesses that they love, but their mind is getting in the way and their fear little pathway is going, bing, 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 you can't do that, never gonna work, da, 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 da. So what does that equal together? It equals you being empowered to take control of your life and creating a delicious life. So if you do feel like you need some help, there is two different ways that you can work with me. Firstly, there is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now, I only work with 10 people at a time, and at the moment I have already got nine people signed up for the beginning of 2014. So there is one client spot left. Um, we do have a wait list, though, as well. So if you'd like to talk to me about personal coaching and you feel like these techniques could be the the way that you could set yourself free and set yourself free in a way that actually empowers you, not requires you to sit in the problem and cry about it for the next six years of therapy, um, then please apply for one of those. So the way that you do that, excuse me, is to go to kyliepatchett.com forward slash breakthrough and we'll send these links to you in an email after the recording as well. And the second thing is um, that we have just decided to do something very exciting which is to open our Destination Delicious group coaching program as a home study program. 
what that means is that by the 1st of December, we are actually able to um, have people join the program at any time and to be able to go through the eight modules of setting yourself clear on your holistic health and mindset path. So we basically work around the seven principles that are in my book that are all the foundations of creating a delicious, loved up life. And we also go through all of the mindset stuff that gets in the way. Now, if you want to hear about that when the doors open on the 1st of December, please let us know by joining the wait list at kyliepatchett.com forward slash wait list. Da, da, da. So the main thing that I want to take away for you this day is that it does not matter whether you are living in a body or a relationship or a career or a headspace that does not work for you. There is always one answer and the answer is love or more precisely self-love. That's it. You don't need to know anything else. If the one question that you ever ask yourself is how can I honor myself right now, your life will improve massively if you give yourself permission to do what you said. <laughs> so um, usually we would have questions, but because we've got technical difficulties, I think we might leave the questions and I will open up on our Facebook page, a questions um, page there. We did have one question before, which was, Hang on, I'm going to go back into it. Oh, <laughs> okay. I just answered that. So someone said, is there any way of finding out how to work with you? So again, the two ways are one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is through um, kyliepatchett.com forward slash breakthrough and the Destination Delicious Home Study Program, um, which is kyliepatchett.com forward slash wait list. So in thank you to you, holding on for so long, <laughs> um, putting up with the, the uh, techno technological issues. Um, with thanks, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to, to join me. And I'd love to hear what techniques you're going to use to put in practice. So come and drop by the Facebook page at T the Tall Poppy Project, Kylie Patchett, and um, yeah, say hello and tell us what you're actually going to be changing. So the free copy of your Tall Poppy profile is at kyliepatchett.com forward slash tall hyphen poppy hyphen profile and that is a free download as my gift to you for thanking uh, me with your time and attention so thank you so much once again we are right on time it's awesome timing and um, I would love 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 to be connected to you on social media or to drop me an email or whatever all of my details are on our beautiful page at kyliepatchett.com and here's to your delicious life. <laughs> See you later. Thank you for coming.